I, I think that's a, a way I would temper this thing about like, know that it's a lot of work, but also know that some of it, you're just not going to figure out until you're right in the middle of it. And that's okay. Hello, everybody, beautiful souls. Thank you for joining me today. Um, this is episode nine of Deck Creator Corner. I am joined today by Kara Simons, the creator of the Prairie Majesty Oracle and also the Heart to Heart Oracle and the Grandmother's Oracle. Um, I'm just going to read you a quick little section on the back of the deck so that you or the back of the box so that you kind of get an idea of what the deck is about. So it says this 48 card deck uses the prairie as a mirror for how to embrace personal power, authenticity, and freedom as one aspect of the harmonious whole. So I'm really excited to dive deeper into this with her. And, oh, I think I see her. Oh, hey. Hey. So I'm really gr glad to be here with you, Kara. It's been like a while. We've been chatting a lot on Instagram. Yeah. And I've been following your posts. And I'm just finally happy to kind of be able to chat with you and really- Me too. Me too. I've been looking forward to it. Awesome. So Kara, before we go ahead and get started, um, I would like to just uh, see if you want to join me for a couple of breaths. Um, I've got my trusty maraca here um, mm -hmm. so that we can just uh, cleanse and set safe space intentions. Um, yeah. So thank you everybody for joining. All right, cool. Um, if you're here with us, you are welcome to join us in this, um, in this breathing exercise. And uh, once we finish, we'll get started with the conversation. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Kara. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I was like starting to go off into this visual. And I was like, all right, come back. <laughs> come back, come back, Kara. Come I, back. Saw kind of, I saw you kind of just like leaning forward a bit and I was like, I oh. <laughs> well, I started seeing animals and I was like, are these messengers for me or for Johnny? But I think mm -hmm. it might be for you, so we'll chat. <laughs> awesome, well, thank yeah. you for joining me with that. And thank you everybody who joined us with that breathing exercise and welcome to episode nine of Dead Creator Yay. Corner. Yay! <laughs> Super excited to be here and to have this conversation with you. And I feel super lucky to be able to say that I'm also going to be interviewing Amy, the illustrator of this deck, um, next month. And so mm -hmm. it's really awesome to finally be able to showcase some illustrators on this series. So I'm really excited. Oh, I um, love Amy. I'm I could go on about how much I love her and how amazing she is. <laughs> um, I'm really excited to chat with her too and kind of, cause I caught a little bit of her somewhere. I don't know, can't remember where, um, yeah. but um, but I was like, ooh, I really like, she's kind of got this like, I don't know, she's got this unique vibe that She's, I'm like, ooh, I really... There's no one like her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there just isn't, so. <laughs> yes, so I'm really excited for that. But before we get started, Kara, I just wanted mm -hmm. to open up some space here and allow you to just give us a quick introduction, um, your name, uh, what your pronouns are, uh, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of information on like what Joyful Resonance is, and sure. then maybe some of your aspirations, and then we'll get into the conversation about your creative endeavors. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, I'm Kara Simons, and I go by she, her. I live in central Iowa with my family. My husband and I have three little girls. And we're both, yeah, they're amazing and precious and exhausting. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're both attorneys by trade, but we've found ways. I work part-time, very limited amounts, and he has his own business. So we're able to do mm. a lot from home because we both have a lot of other interests. And uh, Joyful Residence is the business I started back in 2017. Um, as mm. a way to create like an umbrella for the various things I felt inspired to create and mm. do. And so it's been kind of convenient. You know, I could set up my own LLC or I can do my own contracts, but only recently have I come to appreciate more that I'm a bridge between kind of two worlds that have mm. been 
And it feels like my spirit did that on purpose. And so that feels really empowering lately to remember, you know, even if I don't feel called to be a corporate attorney full time for the rest of my life, that was the right path for me to get to right here. Mm, that's so amazing. And it kind of reminds me of Ben about when, right? Because she's also a lawyer. I think she's an yeah. attorney and she has all this stuff going on. And mm -hmm. I think it's like, the I, I think it's the perfect, it's a weirdly perfect mix, right? Right. Like, right. especially when you want to be like a small business, uh, like, mm -hmm. you know, a creator and you're trying to like publish stuff. Like, I right. can imagine like having that background, that corporate, but it's, especially that like more attorney, like lawyer background, like mm -hmm. can be really helpful in yeah. like these situations because I talked to a lot of people um actually one of the people that I interviewed recently um Stephanie of the Chromatic Fates Tarot she mm -hmm. was talking to me about how like she had to get involved with a lawyer in her process because right. like there was a lot of contracts and things I oh yeah I've saved so life. much money doing it myself <laughs> It's, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm grateful that I can yeah, do it and then I can yeah. do it the way I want. So, yes, that's really awesome. That's like, I'm thinking like, as you said it, I was like thinking about it, like, man, it would probably be like save so much time and like just thought power trying to figure out the different things mm -hmm. Like you already know where to go, who to ask. Like, so right. yeah, that's really cool. And it's like I said, it's not like, it's not something that people would naturally be like, oh yeah, attorney and like tarot right. deck creator, like magical, mystical right. person, you know? Right. Um, but you know, I'm seeing such a, it's been really interesting. I've started doing in-person readings again in my community. And at one of the events, I had a couple of attorneys. And, you know, I'm starting when I used to do workshops, I would have people that would work, you know, in politics or at a bank or different professions that you might think would be attractive to someone who's not as open to a lot of the unseen metaphysical kind of things. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case anymore. And so I feel like it's been really um, empowering to remember that part of what I can help share is you can show up no matter what profession you've done in a holistic way. And even if I don't, for my legal clients, I'm not like, hey, let's pull a card. Let's see what we're <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. that's, I know that that's not appropriate in that <laughs> right. setting. But um, just being able to develop and hone my skills of intuition and reading a room it it gives me insights that help me to like pick up on things that people aren't saying in a meeting or you know what I mean it, it helps yeah. me get ideas for effective ways to argue because I'm tapping into all of the available tools that I have so yeah that's, that's so I amazing that's, that's so amazing and like I just love how like each one of us right like the path yeah. that we chose, right? So like maybe you didn't go into the attorney thinking like I'm gonna, you know, make tarot decks and right. be magical, right? And so like, you know, similar with me, you know, I went into biology, I was gonna go to medical school. Um, yeah. I graduated my bachelor's in biology and I was like in that process of medical school. And then all of a sudden I like discovered like herbalism and I discovered like mm -hmm. permaculture and I, I discovered like regenerative holistic healing. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this, and then also like I was already on a spiritual path by then. And like I was realizing more and more that like the medical industry is not spiritual. You know, like I wasn't gonna get any of that, the spiritual stuff, but I also wasn't gonna get any of like the natural stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where I started to realize like I need to shift this way. But when I went into biology, like I didn't think that that was going to start helping me with like herbalism or even right. with my tarot, you know, because like a lot of, um, I get a lot of understanding from like this deck. If mm -hmm. I hadn't taken ecology mm -hmm. in college, like this deck, like it would still be amazing and beautiful, but I have such mm -hmm. a deeper understanding of the importance of like decks like this, you know, or like the Pacific Northwest tarot. Right. Um, you know, like because I have that training in biology and that training in ecology and stuff and mm -hmm. my interest in permaculture, like it's like inadvertently like enhancing my magical practices. So absolutely. I love that's that. Awesome. And I'm also relieved because like one of my biggest fears in making the deck was like some ecologist is going to come tell me I'm wrong and that I like I'm explaining something wrong. Cause, yeah. know, I educated myself, but most of what's in the deck is very like very common knowledge, things that people can readily know right. and understand. It wasn't deep research, but I was always like, oh, am I, I hope I'm not saying something wrong that a scientist <laughs> would correct me on. <laughs> yeah, no, at least for, from my perspective, I felt very much connected to it and that scientific perspective, mm -hmm. um, even though I don't necessarily use them scientifically, but um, I right. connect to them in that way. And I feel like um, 
like you said, like everything that I've read in there is like stuff that's like readily available that a lot of people and even like animals that I didn't know about. I just went right. and looked and that wasn't like I was like, wow, that's not anything what yeah. she said here you know it was always very yeah. much in alignment with what i found in the deck and so that made me really happy cool. and then aside from that like i guess like the accuracy um just like the importance of like the representation right of wildlife mm -hmm. and like that we have to like see the beauty in it and we have to like help preserve it and all this other stuff right um so right. that was also something that i really resonated with in this deck um but kara i wanted to ask you um a little bit about your origins because i i noticed that you focus on oracle decks mm -hmm. and so i wonder i wanted to know a little bit about your history like what got you started with oracle decks do you do have you ever done tarot and then... i i have a lot of tarot decks and yeah. i've i really love tarot i i started really serious like i say seriously but by seriously i just mean using it for myself and trying to learn it better i've been doing that for years now but it's not mm. something where I mean, I read for people in person or online, but I only use my own decks. I don't, mm. you know, I don't feel like I'm at a place where I have that knowledge to read tarot. Mm -hmm. Like I've had tarot cards read for me and it's amazing how much, um, you know, symbolism and interconnected meanings that an archetype mm -hmm. draw on. And I'm not at that level yet. To read <laughs> yeah. But I do, I love structure and um, I appreciate that about the tarot that there's, there's a lot of structure right. that you your hat on. Um, but for me, I did, the first deck I ever had was an Oracle deck. So um, the quick version of it is um, I went through a, a big metamorphosis in about 2011 and abandoned mm -hmm. pretty much everything I'd ever believed about Christianity or spirituality, like that mm -hmm. worldview lens that I was raised in and felt very committed to, the bubble popped. So I yeah. went through a period of like, what is real? What can I trust? All of these spiritual experiences yeah. I'd had within that bubble, I had to untangle that they were real. They just didn't mm. need the gloss of a limiting view that I had right. had for so long. And so as I was coming out of all of that, um, so I mentioned I have three kids. My middle daughter was born on the winter solstice um, in 2013. Ooh, magic baby. Oh, it was magic. Like she was born <laughs> in the calm, like, I basically had, I, I did home births with all my girls in the water. Oh, that, that's like, so amazing. Pure magic. Yeah. Like, I don't know how to birth on land. I don't know how to do it. And I, <laughs> yeah. I'm done. I'm retired now. <laughs> but, like, I needed the water. And her birth was just, I can't really, I don't have words to describe it. But up mm. until close to the end, like, I was laughing. Like, it was, I just had this image the whole time of holding her on my lap. And we were, like, going down a rainbow. And I was bringing her from the spirit world. Oh, my God. <laughs> And then I had this, you know, That's towards so the, beautiful. it was amazing. And towards the end of it, um, I was like, the only way I can describe it is that I was um, like, I was weeping and wailing with all of the women through all of time mm. in, in supplication for, and I just started singing God, like just mm. in a very low voice. The midwives told me later they were crying and that I was like shaking mm. the house, but I felt like I was part of every woman that had ever gone through the pain of birth, but not only the physical birth, but spiritual birth. Anyway, mm. that experience changed me. And I felt like it was, it was a spiritual rebirth for me. And uh, that was right before Christmas. And my mom had been like me going through a metamorphosis of abandoning some beliefs and she mm -hmm. had used tarot and she gave mm. me a wonderful deck that year for Christmas, four days later, that was called the mother's wisdom deck. It's not in print anymore, but it was, um, a really beautiful deck exploring different archetypes of like goddesses and different mm. like spiritual figures in different religions around the world. And then some things with like nature and it was very geared towards like parenting young children. And it just oh, okay. really started to help me. And um, within, I would say a week or so of that, I started hearing more people talking about um, connecting with animals as messengers. And at the mm. time it was always like spirit animal, but I don't use that term anymore because it's not mine. Mm. It's not something that I have claimed to. But um, as soon as I started putting any attention mm -hmm. to that, I was asking in my mind, I wonder who my guide is. And I immediately heard Raven. And it mm. surprised me because I'd always loved birds, but I'd never particularly noticed Ravens. And mm -hmm. then I got confirmation after confirmation of how powerful that mm -hmm. connection was. Like, 
I tell this story about a woman that was doing like a craniosacral therapy for me that had no idea. She saw black feather wings coming out of my heart. Wow. And I got an animal deck and the first card I pulled was a raven and I just- Of course. Of course, you know, and so <laughs> raven has, yeah, raven. I, and I also learned that some people um, believe that this, the day of power for raven is the winter solstice. Oh, and wow. so it just it just started to be like I can't ignore the magic of this I can't ignore yeah. the synchronicities <laughs> like there. it was a really auspicious beginning because it gave me confidence that I wasn't making it up like mm. I couldn't have engineered all of that yeah and so you know so I just started being open I really love what you said in the beginning about you know when you were doing these things and it's like you're setting the ask you're you're sending out mm. this intention that's what I always say when I do workshops, like we have to ask, we have yep. to open the pathways. I'm always like, you have to pick up a phone and call so somebody can answer, <laughs> yeah. and, you know? And so I just started doing that and I could go on and on, but the, the bottom line is that from that point on, every nudge that I followed, everything that I explored um, led me to where I am now. And the Oracle deck part came in in 2017 mm -hmm. when, um, I was going through some personal stuff and I felt really sad about not having a grandmother connection because I wasn't mm. really one. And my little, my youngest baby was really little and I was just dealing with a lot of emotional things and I was sad. And I realized that nature had always been my grandmother. And so mm. I, it just hit me like this lightning bolt, like I need to make that a deck. And I wasn't planning to tell anybody, it was just gonna be like for me and my family and friends. But then right. I was basically told like, no, you need to share this and you need to out yourself, <laughs> like to even the people that don't know about this part of you, mm -hmm. which was scary. Mm -hmm. But um, everything I'm doing now stems from, like that was another demarcation point for me, mm. crossing that line and, and saying, yep, this is part of who I am. And this is part of my path to use, um, you know, this hodgepodge of things that I am passionate about and have skills in and and bring a deck into the world and so everything has kept growing from there so it like th that first one came through which was the grandmothers like you were really inspired to manifest that and like yeah since then it's kind of been like a snowball effect where it's like yeah. second deck now there's <laughs> a third deck out <laughs> yeah um, yeah and so i mean the grandmothers i i it was very small print runs i mean it was just mm -hmm. like family and friends i didn't you know i didn't really try to do anything big with it but um, but I did start carrying them in my purse. And so friends mm. at gatherings or places I would go, like people would be like, oh, do you have your cards? Like, you wanna read for me? Mm. And I mm. love doing it, you know? And then um, my second deck, the heart to heart deck is all nature photographs that my sister took of hearts. Mm. And so she had contacted me and was like, do you think this could be a deck? And it was like an immediate yes. And so it's, it's a beautiful deck all about exploring relationships and mm. like how to navigate those meetings whether it's with another person or an idea i've read for people about like a location a geography that they're close to mm. but it's about you know what does it really look like to dig into like following your heart and living from your heart what does that look like when things are shitty and hard and you're fighting mm. and used so it's the cards have affirmations and journal prompts and things to help you take some ownership of how you're feeling and work through some stuff so that when you come back and engage again, it's from a more calm and centered, maybe not calm, but from a more heart centered. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And so. you know, that's really, um, that's really awesome because immediately what I thought of was like the lover's archetype. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, it's almost like that deck is like a deep dive into that archetype. Like, how do you, how are you in a relationship with something? Like, how do you mm -hmm. take ownership for your feelings with, with within okay. the duality, you know? Um, yep. You know, because the lovers, a lot of people like to, uh, like, they they're tends to ascribe like a romantic, um, like, interest or like an external person, um, which is very appropriate for that card. But I also feel like these other aspects of like choice and how we choose to be in relationship with other <laughs> beings and other things in general. So that's right. really cool. It's almost like a really deep dive into that archetype. And I feel like that can be a really challenging archetype, right? Oh, yeah. So like, yeah, that's really awesome. I really yeah. like that about that deck. I might have to check that one out. Yeah, <laughs> I only have a few copies left. So <laughs> oh. yeah, it, oh, again, no. it was another one I just did a small run with. Um, and I'm not sure if I'll try to 
upgrade it or come back to it in, in some way. But it is, um, I mean, it's a beautiful deck because it's, you know, the, the photos are beautiful, but I have had people say like, you know, it's, 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 a, it's gonna call you out. It's a little bit scary sometimes to pull it because it will be like, are you, are you having boundaries right now? Are you honoring your own homeostasis? Like, you know, so when I do readings for people in person, it's usually a deck that I, if somebody has, like, I've had a lot of people ask about some pretty intense life situations. And um, so it's kind of a nice deck to add to a reading. That's how I usually use it. Like, mm. get clarity, like, once we get an overview of where you're at or where things are going, the heart cards can help, like, okay, what's something you can do right now? Mm. It's anybody else, you can't change them. You know, it's a good clarifying deck. That's what I usually use it for. Yeah, the, and, and it makes sense, especially, like, um, like I said, those it's usually a really challenging topic. So, like, I can mm -hmm. see how, like, if somebody uses that deck for a reading, it's going to be like, oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I've used it for myself, you know, <laughs> like, with my husband or with my kids. Or sometimes I use it about my relationship to my creativity. Mm. And it's, it can really be helpful. So, I don't know of any other deck that's quite like it. And I, even if I don't use it every day, when I need it, it feels really helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's really awesome. That's really interesting. Um, thank you for yeah. sharing that. So, um, so you made these two Oracle decks, and right. then uh, both of them, so did all three of them come to you kind of in the same way? You were just like inspired to yeah. like, manifest this? The grandmothers, just as soon as the door opened as this idea of like, well, why not try to make an Oracle deck? I've never done that. And I mm. completed the deck in a couple of months. And it's photos. Mm that version i'm upgrading it right now with new categories and art and all oh okay stuff. cool yeah but um with the heart deck it was very similar like my sister said that to me and i instantly like i was scribbling this is how i tend to get in the beginning of the deck <laughs> like i have post-its and notepads and like i'll be making dinner and i'm just like oh i gotta, gotta write that down you <laughs> yeah know? you gotta write it down and so when that happens when i get that zing or feeling like something has just opened and it starts to flood in that's how i know it's it's something I need to follow up with. So for all of the decks, it's definitely, that's my process. It's like a lightning bolt and then, oh my gosh, floodgates are open, you know? Yeah. That's so, how with the, so with the Prairie Majesty Oracle, um, mm -hmm. after feeling these two, um, after having already done the, having the experience, right, of sure. already creating these two decks with the Prairie Majesty Oracle, was it... Um, did you also feel like maybe there wasn't like an animal deck that you were really connecting with and you wanted to manifest well, one or, um, or was it just kind of that sudden inspiration? I mean, I have a lot of animal decks. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but, <laughs> and in, in the beginning, it was a really, really great way for me to get that validation and confirmation about, you know, if there was an animal I was feeling etherically or dreaming about and I would pull that card and it would just be, I needed like the training wheels of that in the beginning to not second guess what I was personally mm. getting. Um, I don't really use other animal decks right now, not because I don't think they're amazing and beautiful. I just, I've developed my own shorthand where I, I can receive things other ways. Um, and so one of the things that I, I haven't mentioned, but a, another big part of my business has been um, offering ways to help other people connect with animals. Mm. And to, um, so one of the things, you know, as I was doing so I started doing readings um, and then I started a couple of local stores, started carrying my decks. And so I developed relationships with them and started moving into having workshops at different places or going out to like a nature lodge um, and just offering a meditation so that people could learn how to tap into that part of themselves where they could mm. connect and receive the messages. From animals. And so a lot of people started to like, I was maybe getting more, um, well known for that aspect even than the decks like I was connecting with more people that way that um, so yeah and so but I always resisted ever making an animal deck because I'm not a traditional artist and I was like mm. this is not something that I can't really do that on my own so I kind of resisted it and um, at the end of 2019 I had been feeling this nudge like hey not I always describe it as like knocking on the door you know mm -hmm. and I'm kind of ignoring it and I'm like no that's too hard I have too many doubts about that but then different little synchronicities were happening of like no you need to pay attention to this like a mm. few people were asking me have you ever thought about doing an animal deck and <laughs> like out of the blue and yeah, so finally, the like, yeah. hey, 
Yeah. <laughs> and so on, on a Sunday at the beginning of December of 2019, I finally was like, fine. Okay. I'm, I'm willing to do it. I'm like, I'm in, but you have to find me an artist because I don't, I can't do this. And the next day, it was a Sunday, the next day, Monday, I had this crazy work project, was working all day, going crazy, trying to be a parent. And I had this sudden burst, even after that, to go clean out my closets and bring clothes to like a clothing drive the next morning, which didn't make any sense, you know, but I was okay, like, right, yeah. I guess I'm going to clean out these closets yeah. and bring Follow clothes. your intuition. Yeah. Yeah. And I went to a local <laughs> community center to drop off all this donation stuff the next day. So this was Tuesday morning and I had just committed on Sunday and mm -hmm. I walked in and I'm chatting with the owner of this space and there's a mural on the wall and it's Amy's art and it's stunning. Mm -hmm. And I start <laughs> yeah. chatting with this guy, like we have mutual friends. Yeah. And he's, and I just somehow mentioned like, yeah, I make Oracle decks and I kind of want to make an animal one, but I don't have an artist. He's like, Oh, you need Amy. Amy's your gal. Here's her number. Call her. <laughs> And I was like, okay, well, that was oh fast. My gosh. <laughs> you know, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. So then I, I contacted Amy and right away she was saying, you know, people have always asked me if I was ever going to do a deck, but I never <laughs> felt like I could manage doing it on my own. You know, it wasn't something she had the drive to figure out and do all of it. And so she was like, this feels like a sign for me. And um, so as soon as she agreed to meet with me, that was when the title dropped in because I started saying to this energy, like, how are you different? There's so many animal decks. Like how mm -hmm. could I create anything that would add instead of just re repeating or like rehashing? And that was when the title dropped in and the tagline of explore your sovereign nature. And it was a deck about, you know, really empowering people to own who they are and, and explore their own um, power and sovereignty and everything around be like being an empowered individual within a whole right like within a biome each part plays a role and so i took all these notes and i wrote all these things up and i met with amy a couple of days later and i mean i've told this story so many times so i apologize if people watching have already heard it but um when i met with i amy, haven't heard it oh you haven't heard it okay so then i met with amy that friday night and we're just chatting i'd never met her before even though we both lived in des moines for a long time and she starts telling me how she's she really gets a lot of dream work. Like she's really mm. active in the dream state and she dreams a lot about animals. You should see like, she has amazing tattoos. Like I was like, Oh my gosh, you're so cool. Like, I feel so <laughs> yeah, square, that's, you know? yes, that's the word. She's just got, she's just cool. cool. Yeah, she, she just, she got, just, she's just like is, cool but she's like the least, she's so <laughs> unaffected and so approachable, you know, she's so chill. But she starts telling me about this dream where normally she didn't dream in words, but she, there were words in a mm. recent dream. And she's seeing these words and she can't make out any of the words except for sovereign. So she's telling mm. me this thing and I was like, Amy, look at my sheet. That's the oh tagline. That's the deck. And we were both like, <laughs> <laughs> that was you know, it. that was it. Yeah. And then, you know, when I started sitting down <clears throat> to actually write, because the way that I work is I just, of course I had lists. I was like, you know, exploring all sorts of possibilities of who would be in the deck, but I didn't really decide any of that. I just waited mm. to see who would show up. And a lot mm. of, like, there were a lot of creatures that I thought, you know, like a, that are really classic prairie animals that mm -hmm. just showed up and that was fine. But um, I was struggling to get over, like, even after this big burst and this confirmation and this lightning bolt, the, the thing with making a deck is you got to do the work. Like you yeah. got to sit your butt in a chair and you got to <sighs> turn your antennas in and, and you got to write something or draw mm -hmm. something. And um, I was feeling really intimidated because I was like, I don't know if I can live up to this beginning. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. And as I was trying to get through all that doubt of like, I, I could tell that what I was about to start was going to be big and it was going to change mm. my life. And it was scary, you know? And um, mm -hmm. I kept seeing stink bugs in my house. And I finally, I thought ferret was first, the black footed ferret. I mm. felt him like raising his hand and I knew his message, but I couldn't write it. And then yeah. this stink bug showed up and I was watching one one day <laughs> flip itself over. And I thought, oh my God, I'm supposed to start with stink bug. And it doesn't make any sense. Like stink bug is not actually, <laughs> like native to the prairie. It doesn't even exist on the prairie, but the stink book was like, no, we're, I'm doing this. We're going first. <laughs> yeah. 
And then I told Amy, I'm like, so I wrote this stink bug card and I hope that's okay because it doesn't make sense. And she said, oh man, I've been wanting to draw a stink bug. I keep noticing them <laughs> everywhere. So, you know, we just had like, it was, I will never stop being grateful for the experience of working with her mm. and how it was just this beautiful synergy. And I just, I felt completely free and confident that she was, she was it and that she was going to make something that would add to the magic. And I mean, I just, I just feel so honored that I got to work with her. She's amazing. You know, like that's, I've um, interviewed a few people who have worked with illustrators and stuff. Yeah. But I feel like I will say that the the collaboration between you and Amy in this deck mm -hmm. is like, it's different. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. It, it hits differently and also y'all approach it differently together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um because a lot of the times it's really easy to forget the illustrator mm -hmm. like i created this i created this and then like you know your name is this big and the illustrator is like in a little corner over there mm -hmm. um and i feel like a lot of the times that's part of the reason why i wanted to highlight the illustrators in this series because like i feel and you know it started with me this whole thing started when i realized that famous singers don't actually write the songs Mm, like okay. somebody else writes them mm -hmm. but then the singer like it's like no that's a lady gaga song i said like, but she didn't write it yeah you know and it's yeah. like i'm not that's just an example um and so that's where i kind of came at with the illustrator just like for for example me i have to have an illustrator for my deck because mm -hmm. i could probably like take a lot of time to learn art and mm -hmm. and manifest something it won't be the vision that right. i have for it right. you know right and I so know. like I have to work with an illustrator. And like, if I'm gonna work with an illustrator, I really want to highlight that person, their work, like, cause they're doing that, the legwork to manifest what I see in my head. And that's not mm -hmm. easy. That's really right. hard right. to do. And so like, I so like, that's why I appreciate y'all because that's, you guys are like bringing that to the forefront, like the importance of that collaboration. Like when I asked Amy for an interview, mm -hmm um she was like oh like because I guess she hadn't seen that I was gonna chat with you she's uh -huh. like oh I don't know like I feel like I should you know K Kara should be there too because oh. we're working on this together <laughs> like she was like not she was like uneasy at first and um, yeah but then once I let her know that we were chatting um she was like oh okay cool that's great like okay <laughs> let's do it um yeah. but yeah so like that for me was a big like wow like this just shows like the 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 level of like respect and honor and like friendship <laughs> that they have with each other and Absolutely. it really comes through in the deck I, I have to say like yeah this deck is amazing well, thank um, you. and can I just but, add one quick thing yeah, there Tony? Of course. because it feels the thing that we realized by the time we got to the end of it was the way we worked together and what it like we both had to really own what we were bringing to the table mm. and and have confidence in it but to be with a partner who was also like, yeah, I have complete faith in you on both mm. sides. And it felt like we were, the way that we created the deck was like mirroring the whole point of the deck, which is everybody's got something to, to do and to offer and to be. Yes. And, and we both were like, yeah, you, you be what you are completely and wholly and I trust you to be that and that it will be a perfect harmony with what mm. I'm doing and being, you know? that by the end of the creation process, I was like, oh yeah, we were just doing one of the lessons of the deck. We were living <laughs> through that, you know? Yes. Which was really yes. cool. I couldn't have had that experience with somebody else. I mean, Amy was the person for this deck. Yeah, and like, that's so amazing because, mm -hmm. and that was actually kind of, we, we jumped into the next topic that I wanted to talk about because that's exactly, I wanted to ask you about your relationship with Amy and how that mm -hmm. kind of came into play and your story right. and, and your background yeah. with her. Um, but I also wanted to maybe get some some more of like the technical stuff, like how mm -hmm. how was it that you interacted with her? Did you give her like a description, like this is what I want, or did you maybe like bullet points and she had more freedom to kind of manifest? How was that sure. kind of interaction? So in the very beginning, um, so I started writing in the beginning and um, I edit, I'm an editor at heart. And so I edit as I go and it's, you know, anything that I turned over to her had been edited like 
<laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, so I started writing. It was probably like in January or February of 2020. And okay. as I would write like a section and, and in the beginning, there were there was no structure. There was no categories. There was nothing. It was just me honoring who came through writing it. And um, and then I would send her like a batch at a time, like mm. as, I, you know, four to eight of them, I would send it to her. And as she started thinking about, you know, it was really her vision as far as like, I didn't tell her I want black and white creatures. And fauna. oh, that was okay, complete okay. Amy. Um, so what I would send her was the verb and the question. And so and that was something I had said, like, I would love for those to be on the cards themselves. Um, and I had a feeling in the beginning that some sort of structure would emerge and that we would need to be able to show that somehow on the cards. But we were, again, we were both very just like, okay, I'm trusting you in the process. It'll all come together. <laughs> yes. And so when she started really trying to figure out what's the style of the deck, she was coming up with a couple of different ideas. You'll notice some of the cards are collage. So there's a photo in the background and then yep. she sketched on top, but not all of them. And so in the yes. beginning, she had showed me three or four different styles. And we ended up saying, okay, it feels like these two. So like, like, yeah, the turkey vulture or the bergamot card um, that she would do some cards that would have a photo in the background and some that would be all just sketched. And so, you know, I did have some um, input on that part of it, but it was really more of like saying, oh, these are the styles I think are the good fit. Okay, right that's, but then yeah. for yeah, for each card, she would incorporate the verb and the question from me. But then it was really her. I know that some deck creators, they can see what they want the card to look like. And they'll tell right. someone, I just need you to do this vision. And right. I think like that's... render it. Yeah, right, right. But really, it was, you know, it's not like I told Amy, okay, for the great horned owl, like, I want it to be close up and I want it to be a moon, you know, mm. it was because I knew that she, I, I didn't want to interfere or override or be like, I know better than you do how to be, mm. that's not, that didn't feel right. I think with yeah. some of my other projects coming up, um, I don't know that every relationship will always look exactly like that because for mm -hmm. some of my other projects, I do have a clearer idea of what I mm. want it to look like. And so maybe I'll try to find an artist who's comfortable with me saying, here, right. like, here's kind of the vibe and the look and I could sketch it, but I just can't actually execute it. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, and so that was another thing that felt really unique with Amy that mm. I just, I mean, it was like Christmas. We had a Dropbox folder and we were both night owls. So like I would text her at midnight or one in the morning. Like I always knew she was awake. <laughs> yeah. And you know, she would like, it's like midnight and she's dropping files into Dropbox and I'm like, oh, I get to see new art, you know, You're like, so, yes. it was amazing. You're like, Yee! Yay! I know. I was always like, but everyone I know is asleep. I can't share this excitement with anyone. <laughs> but yeah, she was incredible to work with. So at what point did you decide Kickstarter was happening? Well, from the very beginning, it felt okay. like this deck was something that would be different. I mean, my other projects, I'm very proud of them. I'm glad I did them, but they weren't, you know, I used photos. They weren't original art. They weren't the kind mm. of package that usually you would see. And, you know, I did small print runs. They were, I sold them in drawstring bags. There was not a box and, you know, um, but I wanted this to be different. I wanted it to be like in a box with a guidebook and I wanted that whole thing. And so from the very beginning, I had told Amy, like, I think we should try to do a Kickstarter and I think we mm. should go for it. And honestly, I was not part of the indie deck community online. I, like, I had no idea this whole world existed. <laughs> it was a year ago that I started, I started the account. It used to be called Prairie Majesty Oracle, but it's now just Joyful Resonance. Um, and I started realizing like, oh my gosh, there's like tons of people out there that make Done. decks and that talk about decks and share about decks. I just had, I was never plugged into that before. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was able to connect with a couple of other creators really early on in that process last summer. Mm. We're doing Kickstarters, you know, a little bit before me. And so we, we've got just like a little private group where we help each other out because we all, That's we were awesome. all watching on Kickstarter within like a pretty short window. Mm. And um, so yeah, that made, even though I had wanted to do a Kickstarter, learning how, oh yeah, there's other deck creators using mm. that. There's, a, and I just started looking at Kickstarters and backing Kickstarters. And now I'm just like, wow, I had <laughs> yeah. no idea. Like I have backed so many Kickstarters now. Um, 
So anyway, that might have gone off your question, but no, no, that was no, that was perfect. And so from the from the beginning, you were kind of like, all right, we got to do some yeah, sort we got to do something. I knew it was going to be special. And um, so you started the Kickstarter. I can't remember. Um, if you, when you started the Kickstarter, everything was already done or if you yep. were still working on it when you started the, it? All of the writing was done and all of the card art was done. Um, I think Amy had done, yeah, we, I, yeah, because we shared in the Kickstarter some of the box art. Um, mm. What, but we, I hadn't done the layout of the guidebook. And I oh, can't okay. remember, I think the guidebook cover was also done because we did like a little demo of mm. that in the Kickstarter. So essentially everything except for you know, the final layout of the guidebook, which took a lot more time than I had thought it would. But that's because yeah. I'm a perfectionist and I was like, I'm, and I have a journalism background. And so layout is something that I know yeah. enough to know, like I had, I can't make it totally suck. So <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I <did. laughs> and so how long from, you said that every, you kind of started uh, sending stuff in January, February, 2020. And so how um, long did that's it- That's when I started writing. Yeah. yeah, that's when I we mean, started writing. So how long from then to finish all the deck and we're launching Kickstarter? So our Kickstarter launched um, right after Thanksgiving, which I would not recommend to anybody. I think it was a it was a tricky window to be pitching something that people wouldn't receive until the next year. Because, you know, people mm. got the holidays. And so I was just really just delighted that we got funded. Because I was like, this is maybe not a smart window. But, <laughs> but it was what we needed to do. It worked out. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we actually, I think I finished the writing probably by, I can't even remember now. I would, I think that I finished writing all of the cards and figuring out the structure or just realizing the cards were already in a structure. Like that's just how they came through. Um, and I think I finished that maybe, I would say by late summer or early fall. I just can't remember. But then, mm. and then he finished, you know, and Amy was a little bit, there was a lag time because she was waiting for me to send her stuff. And so um, we ordered prototypes, I think, in early October, maybe, or mid-October. So we had okay. to get prototypes. And then um, one thing I would recommend to anybody who's planning a Kickstarter is get enough prototypes that you can share and that you can mm. ask people. Like, especially if you find people who already are interested in your posts and your shares about it, like they're excited about it then reach out and say, hey, can I send you a free prototype? And would you be willing to help spread the news about it or try it and give me feedback? And I really think, I mean, we sent out probably a dozen or 15, something like that. And I think it made a huge difference in, because mm. people could try it. I mean, it wasn't the right. final version. It didn't have the gold, the rose gold, but it allowed people to practice like, oh, I can actually pull a card. I can and I put the guidebook online on a password protected page so that they could go read descriptions. And I really think that helped because then people, they could have an authentic experience of exper you know, experimenting with the structure and right. the messages resonated. And so that was, you got the prototypes in October. So that was just right before you, maybe yeah. like a couple or of maybe months, even like got a month. It's or... like beginning of November. I mean, it was a tight schedule. We did it, yeah. it was really tight. <laughs> I think that yeah. we sent decks out and people got them, you know, maybe a week to 10 days before the Kickstarter, which I think mm. it would be smart to give a bigger window, but right. you know, it worked out. Yeah, exactly. And you know, lessons mm -hmm. learned. And now like, if right. you're ever going to do it again, you have everything on lockdown. You're like, I know yeah. everything that I got. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, learning curve. like if any of, if anybody watching this is going to do a Kickstarter and you need someone to hold your hand, like, feel free <laughs> listen <laughs> i'm i've had this is the ninth conversation the ninth chat i've had with the deck mm -hmm. creator about the process mm -hmm. and it's almost like every conversation i have like i realize like how much more like work you have to actually do yeah. and it's not just like i'm gonna make a deck <laughs> like right um, i mean it is so, it's, it's it definitely is. that but then <laughs> yeah. it's like but then there's a million other things that. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it, it's kind of like the difference between like the magician and the emperor right the magician's like all magical and just like manifest it but then the mm -hmm. emperor's like okay structure structure you know the emperor <laughs> is my birth card in tarot and oh really yeah and we're one of them, that and the death card. But I've always like been like, oh yeah, it's no wonder I love a good structure. I love a good, <laughs> like I like creating containers that mm. then you can experience the magic within them, but it gives you like a framework. 
that yes. that is very exciting to me to create that. Yes. Well, and you know, you said that, and I think that's like the perfect way to like describe this this deck as like a <laughs> container yeah. where you can like understand yourself and stuff. And um, mm -hmm. it kind of um, and this is kind of along the topic that I wanted to discuss next too was like one of my favorite things about this deck is like the diversity of ways that you can use it in yeah. um like there's just so many different ways to use it and but my favorite way that i've found so far is to use it as like an anchor for like a spread like to base mm -hmm. a spread around it like just have mm -hmm. the one card and then like answer the question with the spread like yeah use it as the spread question and that's been just so like powerful and magical cool. and then when you mix that with the spread machine or spread crafters oracle mm -hmm. from kim like it really kind of gives this it like adds so much to like if you're trying to work more with spreads and you're trying to dive deeper into topics mm -hmm. um like each I of these cards is like a, a window <laughs> what I, I need to just get that i'm waiting on um oh, the baby yeah. pandas because I loved pandas as a kid, and so I, yes. I knew I needed that deck, but I'm like, oh, I need to just get Spread Machine, because it's it sounds like something I would love. Like, she and I, I message, and we talk about, like, we love we love structure. We love to create the thing. Yes. So I really yes. respect that a lot. I think when you said about, like, creating structure in a container, I thought of Kim immediately. Yeah. I, thought, I feel like oh, y'all are both with her, in for that sure. same that same vibe of like creating something where people can kind of go within and then mm -hmm. discover things about themselves and stuff. Right. So yeah, um, I've really, really been enjoying using this deck for Good. a bunch of different purposes. And also just like, just to like get ideas for like important questions to ask, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, just looking through and being like, Hmm, let me see what question. And then if I'm like, if I see a question, like this question really is making me feel a certain type of way, um, then I like pull it out and I think about it more oh, and I read, it, I read your guidebook and stuff. And so mm -hmm. like, sometimes I don't even use it as like that traditional Oracle, like pulling sure. a random card. It's like just going through. Um, mm -hmm. And I started doing that because of Kim's deck. So Kim, cool. her deck also invites me to do that because mm -hmm. I want to pull a random card, but then it's almost like, I feel like it's, like I resonate because it's a spread making deck. Mm -hmm. I resonate with looking through it and seeing which ones pop out to me and then right. pulling that aside and making a spread. Um, and so I did that with hers and I was like, well, I mean, I can do that with Karis too because if they're on the same line. They've got that same vibe of like being the possibility of being a prompt for right. a spread or a question. Right. Um, so that. yeah, I'm, I've been really enjoying that aspect of this deck. And so I wanted to ask you, um, when you were like envisioning this deck, like what were you hoping people could get out from using it? Sure. Well, I mean, I think it's the heart of everything that I do. Any offering, the thing that ties them all together is the deep respect I have for everybody's internal guidance system and their innate connection mm. to their higher self, to the spiritual realm. I mean, you can choose any kind of language or lens to participate that in but because of my experiences within a religious bubble it's mm -hmm. me extremely protective and extremely careful of i never want anything that i offer to feel like it's not accessible to someone wherever they are mm -hmm. you know and so it feels like this deck i wanted anything i make i want it to feel like it's it's like reaching a hand out to someone and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm right here with you. And mm. here's some tools, here's some help, but like, you can do it. You've got this, like, trust yourself, trust the power that you have, you know, that really it's just all of this. I mean, I don't think we actually need Oracle decks or tarot or crystals, or we don't need any of that to be able to live our truth or connect mm -hmm. with ourselves, you know, but they're, they're wonderful, beautiful, supportive tools mm -hmm. that have really enriched my life and that have helped me to develop a deeper trust in just what I feel and perceive and hear without using a deck or without using a tool. And yeah. so my hope is that anybody, especially the Prairie deck, um, I just, I really hope that when people use it, they come away feeling like just really empowered and also um, like they trust themselves more. That they're like, oh yeah, mm. oh yeah, I can go inside. I can get the answers I need no matter what's happening in your life, no matter what circumstance or who's 
whatever messages you're hearing outside of you to have to have something that can say no remember come back in you mm. all that you need and so my hope is that people when they use it they're like oh right yeah i am awesome okay i've got this i can just <laughs> yeah you know yes yes i love that so much and i feel like that intention um, can sometimes be difficult to find in tarot, right? Yeah. Because yeah. tarot, like, can give you that. Mm -hmm. um, but tarot also has, like, the Three of Swords and the Ten of Swords and, like, Judgment mm -hmm. and, like, Justice in Reverse. You know, like, mm -hmm. the tarot, mm -hmm. like, has all of these things that, like, also can come up for you. And so, and mm -hmm. even though, like, and I was going to say that about this deck, too, is, like, this is also kind of a deck where, like, you can like it can invite that like that those shadow work concepts and ideas and like it can sure. be very in on the shadow side but it's not it's not like some decks where like they almost like re-traumatize you you know yeah. like yeah. to get you to like realize which is appropriate in some circumstances mm -hmm. but um i feel like for example, I like using it with the gentle paro a lot. I do too. Because yeah. because because of that same thing where it's like the gentle tarot can still give you those direct and like mm -hmm. shadowy and intense messages mm -hmm. without like triggering you to you know like right. back to where back to your trauma. Right. Um, whereas a lot of like for example, ten of swords cards that for, that's one card that a lot of people struggle with. And it's because the imagery in a lot of decks are just so like intense and like stabbings mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so um, that's what I really like about decks like this and the gentle tarot is that like, it's not that there's no, none of that, you know, like the shadow yeah. still comes through and it's, it's almost like a result of the questions, you know? Yeah. Um, it's yeah. like the questions trigger you to be like, dang, it's almost like what you were saying about the heart to heart where mm -hmm. like, sometimes it like they really challenge you the questions and yeah. that's how I I felt like that a, a couple times with this deck I'm like okay like, <laughs> right, <laughs> I, right. I hear you <laughs> I know I'm not, I know I'm not, and but it's you know honestly it's mostly been about it's mostly been in situations though where it's like you need to like fo take care of yourself like you right. need to like pay attention and mm -hmm. open up to like what you need um mm -hmm. so like every time it's kind of called me out it's always been along those lines of like you need to center get back into yourself like focus on what is important for you and focus on your healing and stuff like that um yeah. can i add something real quick before you of jump? course it, it just because i thought of something i don't know that i ever crystallized it like this but um going back to this idea something that i love doing like i said is making containers having structure mm. for that magic experience and specifically with the prairie deck, there's a number of cards where it felt like, okay, I'm creating a container with this card that if somebody mm. does have trauma or wounds or grief or heartbreak around that topic, mm. this is like I'm creating a womb or a cave or some sort of container where someone can feel like I'm, I'm enclosed in love, I'm not alone, and I, I'm able to go into that really difficult stuff, mm. letting it consume me or overwhelm me or sweep me away. And that there were some cards when I was writing them that I had to go into those places and I had to bring, like I had to bring my love bubble and my love cocoon and be able to stand it. And that was, that was part of what I had to do to understand the message. But, but mm. I'm often, I, my hope has always been, okay, if somebody pulls certain cards that touch on some of those themes that, that, the messages of the deck are comforting enough that you're like, okay, mm. yes, I'm, I'm strong enough to heal this now. And I'm strong enough to not like acknowledge it and name it and say, yep, this is, this is a hard thing I'm feeling, but I'm not alone. And I'm, I can do it. I'm, I'm in my sovereignty. I'm the light and I can shine that out. Yes. You know? I get excited yes. about this topic. <laughs> yes. I love that so much. And actually I went through the deck and I found one of the cards um, mm -hmm. that was one of those like shadowy moments for me. And it was the shed card. Um, wow. And it was this question, man. It says, how can I know? And then it's underlined, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. how can I know myself as bigger than any fear? And so I was like, oh man, 
<laughs> like that was like a big shadowy question for me because I yeah. really had to sit back and be like, so what are my fears? You know, like what mm -hmm. am I actually afraid of? Mm -hmm. um, or what am I not wanting to admit that I'm afraid of? You know, like because if this card comes up, it's because there's something that needs to be right. thought of, you know, or maybe right. even let go. And so like, right. I didn't even get to the verb, you know, I was just looking yeah. at the question and then I noticed the verb and I was like, whoa, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and so that was really powerful for me. And that was a little bit, like, it was a bit more shadowy, right? Than I was expecting, you know, like when I was first using the deck and I pulled the shed card and I was like, whoa, that went, that went like straight deep to the core, you know, it didn't, yeah. no, no punches pulled, like no, and that can be right. a common thing in Oracle decks where it's like very mm -hmm. rose colored, right? Like right, right. Everything is nice and flowery. On the surface. <laughs> when you're feeling really terrified or really heartbroken, that kind of messaging, it almost makes you feel worse because it's like, well, why can't you just decide to feel that way? Right. And, and that was the <laughs> last thing I ever wanted someone to feel. Um, mm -hmm. And I love that you mentioned that card because the process of writing that particular message really illustrates that mm. like the way that so what i would always start out if i would feel like a knock like okay here's prairie king snake yeah kind of and then i would the first thing i would wait to understand was the verb and the question and i would get those first oh. and sometimes they would get polished like the wording of it but the core of those were usually where i would start and then as i would be like okay well how does how does this work with I always like to ground it in something about how they interact in the wild or how they exist or live or mm. grow. And so then I started learning about prairie kingsnake and how, you know, if you come across one in the wild, it might look like a rattlesnake. They're often mistaken for a rattlesnake, but mm. they're not, they're not venomous. They're not poisonous. And so it felt like such a perfect uh, creature to represent yes. this metaphor of like, okay, we think our fear is the real thing and that that's what's going to poison us. But, but if we, like you said, if you confront it and you say, wait, let me name you, what am I really afraid of? That that's the starting point. That's the place where you start to take away the power of the fear. Yes. Sometimes yeah. for me, when I do it, I'm like, oh, this core thing that I'm really afraid of is actually really ridiculous. Like it wouldn't, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You're able to yeah. like, oh, right. This is, this is not real. It's an illusion. Yes. And that's just like the prairie king snake. You're like, oh, wait, I'm not scared of you. You're just this perfectly lovely snake that's out in the wilderness yes. with me. You know? Yes. You're and not going to hurt that. me. I love that so much because it reminds me of that. Um, I don't know if I heard this like in, in a philosophy class or something, but it was that whole mm -hmm. thing of like, when you're in a dark room and you're in a, cor in a corner, you see like something that looks like it's a coiled snake. Mm -hmm. And so you're fearful, like, oh, no, I'm in the dark with a snake. Are there other snakes? Like, what the right. heck is going on? Like, but then right. you turn the light on and then you look into the corner and it's a piece of rope. It's just rope. Right. You know? And so, like, and then automatically, like, your fear is gone and it's mm -hmm. like, you're better now. And like, oh, ha ha. Like, <laughs> but, but, but the reality is, is that for that split second, you believe that your life was in danger and it, and, and for you, for all intents and purposes, it was, you know? Right. And so that's, that can translate to anything in our life, you know, like any fear or any illusion that we have for ourselves can represent themselves in that way to us, where it's like, we see them as, it's like with the moon card, where like, we see things as bigger and scarier than they yeah. actually are, you know, our right. shadows, right. our shadows, our, 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 our aspects, um, our, you know, unwanted aspects or the, are the parts mm -hmm. of ourselves that we want to kind of hide away, um, they often kind of manifest in ways that we um, experience as big and loud and scary. Um, right. But really, when you get down to the core, they're just parts of ourselves that need expression and validation. Mm -hmm. um, and like letting go, right? Like shedding that fear allows us to like get to the core and allows us to like work with those emotions and feelings and all that right. stuff. Right. So. Well, and I think what is at the core that for me, that is what allows me to shed those fears is that core of, oh yeah, I am, I am an aspect of source. I am an aspect of God. Mm. Whatever, however you think of the religious or spiritual, you know, lens that you use. I mean, that's, that's one of my basic beliefs that I am source personified. I am one aspect of that diamond. And so mm -hmm. if I know that to be true about myself, what can't I overcome? What can't I yes. not find light through? 
that I, and it also helps to heal that. I think one of the big fears that, or the, the beliefs that underlies a lot of fears for me, if I go really deep is a fear that I'm cut off somehow, that I am mm. I'm left and abandoned and I'm away from my mother and I'm lost. That is mm. to me like the most heartbreaking place I could ever go. And so to yeah. know that I can't, I can't lose. I mean, I have to think of source in, in a feminine way, but right. I can't lose her. She is, I am her. She is me. Mm. Like, and I think when I you know that. that about yourself, then it's, that, then it's easy to shed fear as an illusion. Not that we don't experience it as real. Our physical reaction mm. to it is real. Our human experience right. is it as real, you know? Exactly. But, and so that's why it's... Said it. Exactly. And it's, and that's why, like, I feel like it's so important. Like you said, like, we don't need these tools, right? But they're mm -hmm. so helpful, you know? Like, they trigger, like, they can really, like, help you move things and work mm -hmm. with things and understand things maybe faster than if you didn't have them. And, um, mm -hmm. may, you know, uh, I just feel like if we have the tools available to us, right, we, sh we should mm -hmm. use them, you know? Um, but we also need to understand that, like, they're only powerful because of us, right? Like, mm -hmm. without us, they're just inanimate objects right. that can't do anything on their own. And so, like, we bring the magic to them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, that's, like, the beautiful part of, like, both creating a deck and then also using a deck that has been intentionally created you know which is why i love like the indie decks and you yeah. know there's been some more like really good mass market decks out there like mm -hmm. limino 11 publishing you know like um they've got a great collection of decks and stuff but like my heart still goes out to like the indie <laughs> decks and like my favorite decks are still indie decks um and so yeah i think that um it's just really awesome to have these conversations and to kind of these like inside uh views of like what you're going through and like how you like went through these processes and like what you had to do and stuff and so i'm kind of wondering if maybe you could share with us a little bit like some stuff about like deck creation in general so like maybe like um something you wish you know now that you wish you knew before <clears throat> um, going with the Kickstarter with Prey Majesty Oracle, or maybe like what was your most important lesson learned uh, through this last publishing with the Prey Majesty Oracle? Well, I could answer both and try to do okay, it kind cool. of succinctly, but um, as far as something that I wish I would have known, and maybe it's a blessing I didn't know it, but there's so much work involved. And mm, that, yeah. that it doesn't stop with the creating of the deck. <laughs> and that to actually, you know, the people like, and I know a lot of, I've gotten to know a lot of indie deck creators and like, you're wearing every hat, you know, mm. you're doing everything. And so all of the work to promote and get exposure, which is not my wheelhouse. It's not something I know I'm not trained in. I don't really know how to do and putting together the Kickstarter and figuring out, you know, how to do the videos and, and you become a photographer and, you know, <laughs> yes. trying to tap into all these things. And, and then even when the Kickstarter is over, there's an all along, you've been coordinating with the printer and having to make sure you're, that things are very technical and that you're being very careful mm. and you're matching templates and then making sure you choose the right cardstock and the right finish and that people can shuffle it and that people can piss <laughs> yep. off at how it works. And, and, but then once you order all of it, there's a delay and then the fulfillment. I mean, I've enjoyed like being able to go through that whole process and see how much work goes into it on the one hand. But I also feel a little bit like, oh my gosh, it sounds scary <laughs> to go through it again. Cause I can't, I'm not naive yes. about what you're getting into. Right. And so, I think I don't mean to scare anybody off from doing it because it's it's incredibly rewarding and fulfilling and it's doable. Mm. But don't like, you know, have your eyes open about there. There's a lot. It's there's a lot of components and a lot of pieces and it's all going to come back to you doing it. And so, yeah, that, you know, just know that <laughs> going in <laughs> and be prepared. Yeah. Like, don't be shocked when you're like, oh, yeah, now I'm also the customer service relation and I'm yep. also figuring out shipping and talking to fulfillment centers and, you know, you're wearing yes, yeah. It's like I said earlier, you know, I've had nine conversations and like I started this because I wanted to like 
feel more prepared and have, mm -hmm. you know, a better understanding of what the process is. And it's mm -hmm. almost like the more I learn, the less mm -hmm. I know about what to do. Not necessarily, I, but you know what I mean. It's like, I do. the more I learn, it's like, wow, there's even more stuff that I have to figure out. And like, and then that's why it's like you said, it's not about scaring anybody off, but we have to be realistic. You know, people have life to like, mm -hmm. people can't just put their life on hold, all, like, and right. manifest the deck on Kickstarter and do all the things. And, and you know, maybe mm -hmm. they have a nine to five job too. And like all of these things that you have to consider, mm -hmm. like, do you have the time? How long is it going to take you to manifest it? All of these things. And so I've really felt like that's this, that's been like one of my important lessons doing these mm -hmm. um, interviews has just been realizing that like, I knew it was going to be a lot of hard work. But after, you know, interview after interview, everybody was like, man, that shit was hard. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? And I, I have to say, like, with the other um, mostly women that I went through the process with, some of them were a little ahead of me. And so they would be figuring out backer kit or they would be dealing with, OK, how do we how do we isolate and fulfill all these orders quickly? And it was amazing to have like to get to read their experience and get advice before I did it. But it's kind of, it reminds me of parenting, how no matter how well read you are about it, like, yeah. I, I think that's a, a way I would temper this thing about like, know that it's a lot of work, but also know that some of it, you're just not going to figure out until you're right in the middle of it. And that's okay. That you mm. can just trust it. Like, okay, during this stage of the process, <sighs> this is my work. And so much of it, I just, I figured out in that time. Because I think you mm. can really get overwhelmed if you start out thinking, oh my gosh, I have to become an expert at 29 different things yes. now. Like just take each phase of the process, but don't be, um, don't be naive in thinking that, oh, I made a deck. Cool, that's it. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. not the case. Yes, you know? yes. And I think that uh, that little piece of advice might've been for me because I'm already <laughs> like trying to do 500 different things at once. And I think one of the conclusions I came into the other live was, oh yeah, because what a piece of advice that one of the other creators gave me was like it's good to feel like inspired and creative mm -hmm. and stuff and like having a lot of ideas if you get ideas about different cards and stuff but she was right. like but make one mm -hmm. card like all the way through like mm -hmm. just do one first so right. that you can so that you can like go back and like see and be inspired and motivated and so that for me was along the same lines of what you're saying of like it's yeah. naive, you know, it's naive to believe that it's hard. So you know, make sure that you're taking one things one step at a time, but right. also like be open to like discovering things in the moment. You know, you can't right. learn everything beforehand. Totally. Like you just can't do it. You you're going to have to experience it. And that, like you said, that that's almost like across the board, like with like when you're experiencing something for the first time, like when you're in that full energy, right? Like you're just right. not going to have all of the right all the variables believe and trust that you'll yeah. figure it out yes and yes. that's and i think it's good to remember that because none no deck creator i've ever talked to has ever been like yeah i had my shit figured out from go and it was <laughs> yeah everyone's yeah. like oh my gosh what did you do in this part isn't this hard yeah oh my gosh, I'm yeah. Gonna cry and having a <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? yeah yeah i think that maybe the only person is probably benable when but that's just because i feel like she's like I don't know. I think she's like superhuman or I something. I was just going to say, it sounds like she's superhuman. <laughs> yeah. Like she's just like, I don't even know how she does everything. And she makes it seem so seamless and she writes all these blogs and stuff. And it's like, mm -hmm. man, I wish I had that energy or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm getting there though. I'm getting there. I'm sure you are. Uh, <laughs> sure you are. <laughs> um, okay, Kara. So next, the other question was maybe a quick lesson learned, maybe? Oh, sure. The most well, important lesson learned? I mean, I shared how completely magical and auspicious the beginning was and how it felt like foreordained even though I'm not sure I like that word but you know it felt <laughs> like I always felt like this whole project was existing in some other dimension and was just like okay your job is to be the human on the team and you're bringing it into the world so even though we started out with more synchronicities and more confirmation than I ever would have dared to hope would happen <laughs> it still required daily choice <laughs> That's the mm. thing I would give. That's the lesson I learned is like, it's even though it was magical and it felt all that stuff happened, it was still me that I had to choose. Mm. And so if, if you, if somebody out there is watching this, if you feel really inspired, you feel like you get this confirmation 
and then it gets hard or you start to doubt yourself or you start to think I made that up I can't do it just start somewhere just try just start somewhere but you know over and over and over again throughout the whole process I had to recommit to trusting that it was the right thing for me to do mm. and that the pieces would line up and that it would go however it needed to be to let it birth how it wanted but but that surprised me because I think after that beginning I was like oh this is going to be a piece of cake I'll just blow up a floor yes. right down. but I still had to do the work I still had to show up I still had to make those choices every time I worked on it I had to choose yeah that's really that's a powerful piece of advice too like a lesson for all of us because like mm -hmm. especially for me like as a Gemini like it's really easy for me to like start something mm -hmm. it's not so easy for me to stay on that thing and yeah. really feel like um I can do it or like especially with this tarot deck from the beginning and I still have days where I'm like I'm not an artist like who am mm -hmm. I like I'm never gonna be able to do this like mm -hmm. And even even worse towards the beginning when I was debating whether I should get an illustrator, I was like, oh, it's not going to be as good if you get somebody else to draw it, you know, like, mm -hmm. you have to illustrate it for it to have value. You know, I was just being so hard on myself through yeah. the whole process, just being really like, just trying trying to convince myself to not do it, you know, finding mm -hmm. everything wrong. Right. The process. That's easy to do. <laughs> yes. And so I think that that's a really powerful piece of advice to like recognize that like the beginning is really magical. And that's how it was for mine too. Like the, the birth of the idea and like getting it all together. Um, but now that we're in, I'm in this kind of like, I'm in this like limbo phase because my brother can't start the art yet. And like mm -hmm. he's doing other stuff and I'm like really wanting to get it done. And right. so like I'm having, I'm learning kind of like to be in that space and to just like not just be like you know what I'm gonna give up being like no I'm reaffirming this like I'm doing this like I'm in for the long haul like I need to really kind of connect with like what I'm trying to achieve right. um so and that's that's it. really awesome yeah just keep choosing it and exactly. see where it takes you mm -hmm. yes um mm -hmm. so we've talked a lot about um some of the challenges and some of the good stuff from the Kickstarter. And so I'm wondering now as a deck creator or as a creator in general, yeah. um, what does it look like? And like, what challenges, like, like what now, you know, like, what about now? Like, mm -hmm. um, cause like you said, um, it doesn't end with like creating the deck. Right. And so um, I feel like a lot of the interviews like may like can focus on, like a lot of the good things of deck creation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so like, I, I, I really appreciate, I don't remember who I was talking to on the channel, but they were very open, like with just like their frustrations and like mm -hmm. how they had to change things and some challenges they were going through and stuff. And so I, I um, remember today, this morning, you made a post and there yeah. was like some challenges and stuff and stuff. So I kind of wanted to create some space and like, just acknowledge that that's there for us too for mm -hmm. us creators and like just like see how um like how that connects to this like debt creation process for you sure well it's a very vulnerable thing to take something that is very intimately tied with you and and what you know your your view or your insights or your your um your your intuition your wisdom it's very intimate to put that out into the world and trust that it will land somewhere. And that's, that was a, you know, there's a few cards in the deck that touch on that. And those, those creatures showed up for me at the right point in the deck when I was like mm. having those doubts and, mm. you know, cause I had to go through for each creature, I had to integrate their message to be able to write it. And, mm -hmm. and so I think for me, the biggest challenge, I mean, I'm, I'm a type a, I'm very good at, like just discipline and like, okay, I'm gonna knock this out. I'm gonna get it done, whatever I need to learn. I'll go watch a thing about it, read a thing about it. That's, mm -hmm. you know, it's not that that's not work, but I have the drive to do that. So the thing that's been the most challenging for me <clears throat> is I can't, I can't make someone like the deck if they don't like it, or I can't, mm. you know what I mean? And I've never gotten any negative feedback from a single person, mm. but, um, but just the daily vulnerability of showing up and saying, here's this piece of my heart and trusting that, okay, whether people 
walk on it or walk past it or whatever, mm. like, it's okay. That doesn't mean it was wrong for me to share my heart. Mm -hmm. because, like I said, I'm not, um, I am have really no experience or expertise in marketing or promotion. We haven't done anything. It's all been word of mouth and social media. And yeah. so, and those platforms, while I'm extremely grateful for them, they're challenging. They're challenging for people that are using them to grow a business or get, um, you know, spread news about what they, what they do or they offer. Because if you're not buying the ads or you're using the wrong hashtags or you post at the wrong time, I mean, there's just all this stuff okay. that I had no idea about really until I tried. And so I think, I think it's important to be honest about that part of it because every person I've ever talked to about that, no matter what size their platform is, that's something that everybody confronts on some level, you know, mm. that it just, it's vulnerable to put things out there. And then if it doesn't get very much engagement, you're like, oh, it's, I've had to learn that that's mm. not, it doesn't change how I felt. So I try to be really, really aligned and like, okay, if I don't, if I feel like posting something, I'll just post it and trust where it goes. But I've been, I've been growing more frustrated with this platform in particular, because it feels like it's one thing to say, okay, of the people that have chosen to follow along, whether they, whether they engage with this post or not, I'm okay with whatever that is. But if the platform is deciding of the people that have decided to follow along, only a tiny fraction of them will even get to see your stuff, then it starts to feel like a bigger thing about why am I creating free content to feed into this machine that is benefiting from all of these small creators that are spending so much time and energy trying to create interesting, visually impactful, meaningful messages that just kind of gets lost. And, you know, I don't know the answer to that. I don't plan to walk away from the platform, but I also feel like maybe I'm going to explore some other ways of sharing the things that I'm passionate about because I don't want to lose my integrity and I also don't want to lose mm. my excitement around sharing. Yeah. I think, yeah. It's okay, I think it's okay to just say, all right, <laughs> maybe I don't <laughs> want to put all my energy into this and that's okay. Yeah. Cause it's ours, isn't it, Kara? Like yeah. we're trying to get the picture and set the things up and do mm -hmm. the real for this. And like, oh. you know, like, right. it's, I hear you on that. And it's, and, um, you know, I've thought about that myself too, especially like, once like the craze of Kickstarter is over, right? Like mm -hmm. that's like a big buzz, lots of followers, this, that, like engagement right. here and there. But like once that's done and like the next Kickstarter is going, like mm -hmm. it's hard to like keep that momentum going. And I was thinking about that, especially about my first deck because my first deck is the Star of Anana Tarot. So that one's a little bit more like, I don't know, specific, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um and so, like, that's, I've been struggling with that. Like, are people even going to like this? Like, yeah. I'm making this for my coven primarily. So, like, who even knows if it's going to resonate with anybody? Right. Um, right. And so, like, I struggle with that so much, you know? Like, and mm -hmm. um, I think that it's really eye-opening to see that, like, like, it's, I don't know, like, it's comforting to know that, like, I'm not alone, but also <laughs> it's comforting to know that you kind of, you found a way to be able to work through those emotions and you're recognizing and seeing them in, in the way that you are, <clears throat> mm -hmm. because that helps me understand where I'm coming from more, you know, right. like, right. and helps, it's almost like when you're empathetic, right? And like being able to differentiate between like what's yours and like what is somebody else's. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and usually what is somebody else's, um, you should be able to like not allow that to like really affect right. and disrupt who you are to your core. Right. Right. Um, and so that for me is a big lesson too, because it's like, and I think I talked about this with another creator too, with Shanique, where she was like, you know, the first, the first and only person who needs to like what you're doing is you, Absolutely. <laughs> you know, like, and you gotta live then... or you're going to go crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. in the creating part of it just you got to just buffer yourself because otherwise it's going to it's going to affect what you make yeah. yeah yeah so so that's really it's it's been a really that those that lesson of hers now mixed in with what you're telling me has been is really important for yeah. me to like keep in the front of my mind as i'm in this deck creation process 
right. because I am just starting out. Like I don't even have like I have the sketch of the first card, you know. Right. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, it's really easy for me to be like, yeah. <laughs> this, this card. That's where this card came from. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I, that's one of my favorite cards. I me love too. That card. I was that's so like... surprised by that message, but I was like, thank you. I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I really love that card. Um, Kara, so uh, I've asked you, I believe, all of the questions, and I've Ooh. gotten so many good information, <laughs> so much good information good. from you. Um, but I actually, I do have some more questions, but they're just outro questions. So okay. I just want to ask you to, like, let us know, like, uh, where we can find you, um, how, yeah. how we can support you. Um, and also, like, what's coming up next for Joyful Resonance? What should we look out for? All that jazz. Cool. Well, um, the easiest way, I mean, obviously, anybody here is already on Instagram, so you can follow along. But in my bio, there's a link to my website. It's just joyfulresonance.com. And I also have um, prairiemajestyoracle.com. So either of mm. them will take you. I'm redoing my website right now, so there's just a landing okay. page. But um and I've closed my website shop, but I still have Etsy open. We still have copies of Prairie that are for sale. So that's, if somebody's interested in getting the deck, that's the best place to get it right now. This beautiful yeah. deck. This beautiful with deck. This beautiful rose gold. <laughs> yes, I am so happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then as far as what's next, I'm doing a reboot of my first deck. It'll be called Song of the Grandmothers with illustration mm. by a friend of mine who's amazing. And, um, it's going to be amazing, but we, we're in the stage of, we're still figuring out our timeline. So I don't really know for sure what that will be yet. And then I have just early concepting of another deck that I want to make mm. that will be um, for the adult inner child or for like actual children. Um, because Ooh. my oldest daughter is about to turn 10, you know, and I've, it's always been in the back of my mind for a few years that eventually I would do a deck with her and her age group mm. kind of in mind, but I'm realizing, um, you know, for all of us adults, like there's that inner child work as well. And so that deck, I, I know the concept, I know the basic overview of it and the world that it will be in and the title, but I haven't, I've only barely started to write, but it feels like it will be, um, I mean, every deck is so different and I'm, the, the song of the grandmothers feels so real to me already because and I use it. I have a prototype of the final deck mm. used Ooh. in readings. I mean, it doesn't have art, but it's, yeah, I've but, written, yeah, yeah, but I've written haiku for all of the grandmothers. I know who they all are. The structure's there. I just have to finish the guidebook. Ooh, but, I'm so excited for that Yeah, one. it's going to be amazing. I know you will love it. And the illustrator is just out of this world. So that will be a really cool thing to have. But this other deck is like kind of, it's in that early stage, which I love. I mm -hmm. love being in yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh, tell me more. Okay, what? Well, <laughs> yeah, what yes. I this. totally, I love <laughs> you with that because I'm still kind of in that phase of mine. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I love this, like, ooh. Ooh, yeah. there's a new message. Yes. Right. It's very exciting. So, oh, and I should tell you, so before we go, what I yeah. felt when you were doing the Oh, opening, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I heard the word Quicksilver. and. Ooh. But it feels like maybe something to do with you. Um, but it feels like like of a fish that's like in the water and there's sunlight on it. And then I felt this fox energy with you. I don't know if fox is something that you resonate with or feel a vibe with, but. So so <laughs> fox energy for me, I um, whenever I see fox energy, it represents my partner because okay. he is like, that's one of his guides is the fox oh, spirit. Oh, cool. Um, and, that's beautiful. Um, and, uh, you know, I live by the ocean here in Puerto Rico. And mm -hmm. so the fishies and the beach are also like, they're like really important to me. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I feel like with the fish and the fox, like there's this interplay right between like the predator and prey and like, mm -hmm. it kind of brings a little bit more of that. It, it just reminds me of the natural cycles. And I'm actually, I'm actually um, meeting my partner tomorrow. I'm flying to oh. Florida. Um, cool. Yeah, I've been here in Puerto Rico since November and he's been in Florida. Um, and so I'm actually flying back there to be with oh. him for like the next couple of months. That's tomorrow. amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Well, because so it felt like, very like, like all of a sudden it's just like, oh, there's a fox. Oh, he's so, oh, they're so happy. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yes. So like that's when really you said cute. the fox, I immediately was like, Oh look, that's Ethan. I'm I'm and I'm gonna see him tomorrow. Oh <laughs> how you sweet. Know? I love that. Yeah. Thank Have you so, so much, much fun. Kara. I'm so happy oh for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this has been such a lovely conversation, Kara. I feel yes, like I'm chatting too. with an old friend that I haven't seen Aww. in a while and we're just <laughs> chilling. Yeah, um, I feel that way too. Thank you for the honor of being here. I've loved it. Yes, it's been so amazing and I've had such a lovely time. I'm really looking forward to um, what you're going to create next. And maybe Yay. like once those other decks come through, Mm -hmm. We'll have a part two interview and see I how those that. went and see yeah. how things have changed since <laughs> then, right? Sure. Sure. That sounds great. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so okay. much, Kara. You're um, welcome. I've had such a lovely time. Have a great day. And you I too. look forward to continue connecting with you. Sounds good. Have a great time with your partner. You. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye. bye.